the longer the period of oscillations of the brightness. And then you needed to find in distant galaxies versions of those same stars. Is that step something that ever gives one pause? Or are you pretty confident that, you know, you are able to find the same kind of star and it's not somehow in some way that we don't fully understand different? They're all at the same distance. And Henrietta Leavitt found that the ones that appear brighter have the longer period and the ones that appear fainter on average have the shorter period. And so she was able to then realize that those that have a longer period are intrinsically more powerful. And you have to make a small correction for the heavy element abundance of the galaxies in which they reside. So there's a slight dependence on what's called the metallicity. The metallicity is just a, a fancy term for what is the fraction of the gases that are elements heavier than helium. But when you do all that, we feel that we have a, a pretty good calibration and the Cepheids behave in the same way. You know, it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it walks like a duck, smells like a duck. It's probably a duck, but you need to make uh, as many different measurements of the Cepheid variables and later of the type 1a supernovae as possible to validate that you really are looking at the same kinds of light bulbs or headlights. So now our sample has 42 galaxies with type 1a supernovae and Cepheids. And I like that number because you may be, of course, familiar with the fact that 42 is the answer to the question of life the universe and everything, at least according to Douglas Adams, you know, right? Sure. So I liked it that we stopped at 42 and we published this paper uh, two years ago now where we reached this five standard deviation level, hence a real discovery. And in the other main type of galaxy, the so-called elliptical galaxy, their star formation ceased by and large a long time ago. And the massive stars uh, somewhat paradoxically, you might think, live shorter lives than the less massive stars because they burn in a nuclear sense, their available fuel more quickly. So they burn out. And so there aren't any Cepheid variables in the elliptical galaxies, but there are Cepheid variables in these spiral galaxies that have a population of reasonably young, massive, but evolved stars that turn into Cepheids. And these are 36 of our 42, and these are also hosts to at least one type 1a supernova.